Today we continue with the fantasy baseball rankings. This is Athletic Alert, sponsored by Michael Rose Blue Podiatrist. We have Colin again today with possibly the most demanding position in baseball. That's right, <laughs> your shortstops. Who's going to be the next legendary shortstop, your next Derek Jeter, you could say? Well, you'll find out here. These are Romaglia's rankings. one of those positions with an obvious number one. This year, it's Carlos Correa. He had a monster season for the time he played last year, got Rookie of the Year for the AL, and I wouldn't be surprised if he follows up with an MVP. That's right. Uh, <laughs> the, Houston, the Houston Astros, again, come in at number one. They have both the top middle infielder spots in both my rankings, Correa yeah. and Altuve. Interesting. Uh, in 99 games in 2015, he had 22 home runs, 68 RBIs, had 14 stolen bases, and had a 279 average. That is fantastic. He didn't even play 100 games, and he got those stats. Um, he also hits in a great lineup with, like we said, Altuve, Springer, Gomez, great guys. He's a 2020 threat, like we talked about last show, 20 home runs, 20 stolen bases, and probably the most convincing point of all, he's in our intro. So, obviously he's good. He has to be good if he's in the intro, right? <laughs> That's right. Dude, I don't know what you're doing here. You got Ian Desmond at number two. He's not on a team right now. All right. He had a terrible season last year. Dude. I don't know what you're doing. I can explain myself with, with Desmond. And what happens if he doesn't go to a team? Still number two, right? Yeah. Uh, he's, you know he's going to get picked up. Do you know, know how many people want a, no, a if Desmond? No, he's one. The White Sox time. need somebody. Okay, he would so fit why? Perfectly why? All right. He's had three straight seasons of more than 150 <laughs> games played. Actually, five of the last six seasons he's had zero that. this year. Which means... <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> so you know he's going to stay healthy. 2015, I get it, he had 19 home runs, 62 RBIs, 13 stolen bases, but a 233 average. Ouch. Worse than Dozier. Oh, that's, worse that's than bad. the whole Dozier? That's right. And he, <laughs> but, think about this. Through 2012 through 2014, there was three straight seasons to which he had 20 home runs and 20 stolen bases. That, that's a great stat. Great numbers. I understand his average is plummeting. Went from a 280 to a 255 to a 233. Whoa, well, that's going off the deep end. However, he's all, uh, well, another bad stat. He's also had 180 Ks in the past two seasons. That, that is not, that's not good. However, 20 home runs and 20 stolen bases is so rare to come by, and he is a guy that just has done it his whole career. This is a guy who, like, three years ago, for the past, like, three fantasy seasons leading up, everyone was like, this guy's the number one shortstop, number one shortstop. And now, because of last season, everyone's like, oh, he's number eight. No! He, I mean, he's not better than Correa, I get it, but he's still up there. If he lands on a White Sox lineup, which I think he'll land with the White Sox, but who knows. Whatever. Yeah, well, I'll put him up there when he's on a team. I'll put him up there when he's on a team. Fine, but I think what really helps people out is, especially if you're doing a fantasy draft early, you can get Ian Desmond way later because people are scared that he won't find a team. Trust me, he will find a team. Okay, well, Troy Tulowitzki you have at number three, possibly the best offense in baseball with, you know, the Toronto Blue Jays. Yes. I love anybody in that lineup. Uh, I think they're all going to do well. You know, Tulo, uh, Edwin Encarnacion, Josh Donaldson, Russell Martin. They got a lineup full of great hitters. And I think Troy Tulo is just going to be, as long as he doesn't get hurt, he has the potential to be a number one shortstop. Right. But I, you've got to kind of expect him to get hurt at this point. Yeah, you really do. Um, you know, to, you don't want to reach for Tulowitzki just because there's a lot of, there's a, I mean, this is a thin position, but there are people on this list that do still excite me. Um, so only get too low if he falls too low. Uh, <laughs> uh, i got to sneak in a pun every once in a while, Jess. Come on. Um, again, like you said, he's a piece of the Jays' offense. You want some sort of piece of him. Uh, he's 32 years of age. Um, the key with him, like you said, he has to stay healthy. But he still has upside. Um, there's only three times in his whole 10-year career where he's had over 500 at-bats. In two of those, he's had 30-plus home runs. In three of those, he's had 90-plus RBIs. Last season, he had 486 at-bats, so just under 500. But he had 17 home runs and 70 RBIs with a 280 average. This guy's unbelievable. Don't forget, two years ago in 2014, he had 21 home runs in only 91 games, and he had a 340 average. Yeah, he's Unbelievable. Ridiculous. He's ridiculous. So if you catch him when he's healthy for a whole season... 
clear cut number ahead, one shortstop. Ahead, right. yeah, the, yeah, absolutely. But you got to count on that, and yeah. that's that's a slim chance. It's not gonna happen. Slim chance. I just kind of want to go over your number four, Xander Bogarts. Secretly had a really good season last year. I think he might have been the number one shortstop. Yeah, in fantasy baseball I, I, last year. Yeah, I think and he was. I mean, I think you can count on him being pretty good again, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's in a great offense in Boston. They have they have a, a bunch of guys who can and really hit the ball. Um, he had a three twenty average last season. That'll probably come down. Yeah, that will probably. Come However, down. he also only hit seven home runs last season. Where in twenty thirteen he hit fifteen home runs, in twenty fourteen he hit twelve home runs. So the power is going to come back with him, and he can have more home runs. And he's still going to be a great player. I mean, he hit over 80 RBIs last season. You can't ask more from a shortstop. That's great numbers. <laughs> that is. And, dude, I just realized you don't have Brandon Crawford on your list. Yes. You I, do I, not I have Brandon Crawford on no. your top 10 shortstops. No. He had a great season. He did. He did have a great season, <laughs> and he was probably the, the, the best, you know, one of the best breakout middle infielders uh, of the 2015 season. The reason he doesn't fall in the top 10 for me is he hits 250. It's 250, and he hit like nine home runs, ten home runs a season. Last year, he breaks out with 21. That's going to regress. People are going to take him way too high. I don't know. I feel high. like he broke out. I feel like he might stay there. If he does, then he's got to be okay. at least in the top ten. Shortstop is so thin. He should be at least eight to ten. Come on. Uh, I don't know. The only th those guys eight to ten are just guys with good stolen bases, and All speed right. comes at a premium. Right. Come on. Yeah. And then you got to love the younger guys at the shortstop position. Oh, uh, yeah. Aside from Correa. Five, Francisco Lindor. Six, Corey Seager. That's on your list. I like Corey Seager a lot higher. I think he'd probably be my number two instead of Desmond. Okay. Seager, I think, is going to have an awesome season. For the time he played last year, he batted, what, over 330. Yeah. Um, I know it was only like 20 or 25 games, but he's been like a top prospect for years, and I think this is the year he's going to be playing significant time in the MLB, and he's going to break out. Absolutely, absolutely right. And that's this is what ex is exciting about this position. We have three guys who are under the age of 24. I know it's a thin position, but there's so many guys that have so much upside. And yes. two of them, well, two of the ones in the lower half, I mean, a lot of people know about Correa now. But, you know, Lindor and Seager, the only reason I have Lindor ahead of Seager is just because he had more games last season. And um, there's a more a bigger sample size for us to look at, and he was able to sustain an over 300 average, and he did a great job. And he's got so, probably more speed than Seager too. Yes, he'll get way more stolen bases, probably right. 15 maybe, whereas Seager will probably get you like five. Yeah, but I think so, in terms of hitting, Seager's oh, way up on this list. Oh, uh, unbelievable! In 2015, in only 27 games, um, he had four home runs and 17 RBIs. And, a th uh, like you said, an over 330 average. Okay. If you paced that out over a whole season, you would have 24 home runs and get this 102 RBIs. I'm telling you, he's going to do something similar this season. Yeah, and that's the only thing that I think is keeping him down is people are like, 27 games isn't a big enough sample size. Well, and that's not. why he falls on my list. It's that's not. why. Uh, but yes. he, and it, it's not a big enough sample size for you to look at. However... He is probably the fourth option on the shortstop list that has that potential to hit you 20-plus home runs. Correa will do it. Desmond will do it. To Lewitsky if he's healthy. But then the next guy, like, if I need 20 home runs, who am I looking towards? Seager right away. Mm -hmm. He's amazing. I think the better brother. Better brother. Of the he, he's probably the better brother. He's a fantasy, <laughs> at least. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to move down one of the last guys on your list, number eight, Gene Segura. Uh, recently got traded to the Diamondbacks, and that boosts his value a lot, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. Paul Goldschmidt. Yep. I love him. I mean, come on. We um, can't stop talking about Paul He falls Paulie. into every conversation, though. I think no matter where Gene Segura bats in that lineup, well, if it's in the top of the order with Pollock and Goldschmidt surrounding him, that's going to be awesome. He could end up being a top five shortstop if that happens, because he's got great speed, too. Mm hmm if he goes in the bottom of the order, you really don't know. I mean, he could still do well there because if it's really far in the bottom, you can get again get back to the top of the order even with AJ Pollock. Right. But I think regardless, being on the um, being on the Arizona Diamondbacks is going to be a lot better for him than being on the Brewers. Yeah, way better situation than being with Milwaukee. Uh, like you said, he's only 26, so he still could have a, a breakout season. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone's waiting for it. Um, He's, I mean, I know a lot of people see him as an injury guy, 
But, you know, he's played over 140 games the past three seasons, so he might get, like, one injury, yeah. but it's enough. I mean, that's that's a pretty good amount of games. Like you said, he joins Paulie G, one of the best hitters in the game, A.J. Pollock, who I think the best table setter in the game. Mm -hmm. And what I love about it is this is a guy who loves to run. He's stolen 20 or more bases in the past three seasons. And it's not going to go down because he's aggressive. Exactly. And what's great is he moves to Arizona, which I think is an aggressive team in terms of stealing bases. Mm -hmm. Even their, saw that last season. Yeah, even their monster hitters who hit 30-plus home runs in Paulie G still stole over 20 bases. Mm -hmm. They love to send their guys and, and make them run. So it's just going to boost his value in that category and the reason he falls at eight he moved up so high for me was Arizona traded Aaron Hill over to Milwaukee so a lot of the rumors that are circling now is that Segura is going to play second base for Arizona which means halfway through the year you could gain second base eligibility for him that's shortstop good. and second base eligibility that's great I mean I feel like not to the extent of D Gordon and what D Gordon can do, but I feel like he can have like a mini D Gordon type type line yes. with you know small power numbers in the homers and ribbies. Just without, without the average. A lot of stolen bases, a pretty good average, but you know less than D Gordon's, and yeah. definitely good runs. Oh yeah. Um, oh. So that concludes this episode of Romaglia's rankings. Uh, like this video if you want more. Comment if you have any differing opinions from Colin's rankings and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time when we come with a new Romantic Rankings video. See ya.